Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. Today, I thought I'd show you the techniques we used to deal with the huge amount of animations needed for Sonic himself in 3D Blast. Having a game in isometric 3D like Sonic means that you need animations for every angle that Sonic faces. In Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic faces 16 different directions as he runs around the level. Here's a look at the run animations for each of these angles. Because he has to face so many angles, a 12 frame run animation ends up taking 192 frames of animation instead, which, as you can imagine, presents some memory issues for a 16-bit cartridge game. So let's have a look at how the graphics are stored so we can figure out how to save memory. Each frame of animation fits inside a square 48 pixels wide and tall, and internally all the graphics on the Genesis are stored as groups of 8 pixel square tiles called characters. So a frame of animation is 6 characters wide and 6 characters high, a total of 36 characters. One character takes 32 bytes of memory to store, so if we multiply it all out we find that the run animation alone takes 216k of cartridge space. Ouch. Well, long-time viewers will have already figured out that we can mirror at least some of the directions. In fact, apart from the straight down and straight up, all the other animations can be mirrored. So mirroring seven of the animations means that we now only need nine directions, which drops the memory used to 121K. A good start. So let's have a look at exactly how the graphic is displayed on the screen to see if we can find some savings there. The Sega Genesis can draw sprites in any size up to four characters square, so for this frame of animation, it uses four sprites like this. But you can see that lots of the individual characters contained within the sprites are blank. I'll highlight in green only the characters that have graphic data in them. As you can see, we only really need to draw 22 characters. And if we move to where the graphic is positioned within the grid, we can find positions that use fewer characters still. Shifting the graphic sideways in the grid means using one extra character, highlighted in red, but the orange characters are now blank, so this would use a total of just 19 characters. So let's look at how the sprites would be arranged to do this. So this uses five sprites instead of four, which isn't the worst trade-off for the memory that we've saved. So if we take an average of 19 characters instead of 36, that means now we only use just 608 bytes per frame, which means the total memory for the run animation has dropped to just 64K. But is there yet more we can do? Well, if we look very closely at this individual character, we can see that it's mostly blank. Each line of the character is stored in memory in what's called a long word. So each character is made of eight long words. Looking at each of these words in hexadecimal, we can see that seven of them are zeros. Now, there are lots of different compression methods for graphics, but they are mostly very slow, and so we wouldn't want to use them during the actual game loop. But we can use a variant of a method called byte run compression, but using long words instead. Copying long words around is the fastest way of filling memory on the Genesis, so it's the only real viable option. It's more complicated in practice than this, but in this example, we know we have seven zeros followed by one hexadecimal long word. So we can say in the data that a negative number means fill the memory with that many zeros, and a positive number means copy that many long words of data. So instead of the 32 bytes of data for eight long words, we can store it compressed into just six bytes. And we can expand this to copy duplicate numbers in a row and not just zeros. Using this method reduced the overall size of each frame of the run animation from 608 bytes to 505 bytes. Factoring that in means that the final run animation ended up taking just 53k of cartridge space, which is less than a quarter of the original size. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at compressing Sonic's animation, and if you did it would be great if you could consider liking and subscribing. Hope to see you next time on Coding Secrets.